Good morning, everybody. I'm Nick from Define Life, and this is our weekly Monday morning check-in to see how you are doing uh, in 2021 now. Uh, whether you're using Define My Day or not, I think you'll find some useful information here. So I appreciate you joining me. Good Monday morning. It is a bright, sunny day, deceptively cold outside right now. Uh, but it's a I, anytime, anytime the sun's out there, man. I on the I appreciate on my Define My Day page. Man, the sun shining is something I appreciate. So any day I can get that, I will take it. So definitely appreciate that. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, thanks for watching this. If you're watching live, I really appreciate it. If you're listening to the replay or watching the replay, I appreciate you doing that too. I appreciate the time you take out of your day to spend time with me and to improve yourself in whatever way you are going about that. Um, you know, whatever you're focusing on in your life to move forward. Uh, I appreciate that struggle, so thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, good to see you. Uh, we have a couple people on so far. Uh, as you're hopping on, I want to make an announcement. Um, today, we are going to be giving away the uh, Do One Thing Every Day That Inspires You Mindfulness Journal. We're going to give this away to, give this away to one person who writes down or, or in the comments says... Uh, their win, a small win, a big win that you've had so far in 2021 using Define My Day. So if, you, uh, if you're interested in winning the Do One Thing That Inspires You, let's hear a win that you have using Define My Day so far in 2021. It's early, but hopefully we have a couple of wins going on already. That said, 2021, um, you know, if you thought there was a magic pill or that we could flip over the calendar page from 2020 to 2021 and that things were suddenly going to be different. This past week has proven you and I wrong, right? I'm not saying what I believed or didn't believe, but this week was, this past week was nuts. Nuts. And uh, I don't think it matters what side you fall on. Uh, you thought this week was nuts for whatever reason. And so... You know, and it's funny because you know, I know 2021 happens, the new year happens, and people are suddenly on diets, they're making changes in their life, uh, they're, they're doing their thing as if it's a second chance, and it's a new year, new, new you, all that other stuff. But in reality, the bottom line is, we're here. Like there's, there's really no difference between December 31st and January 1st. There's no difference other than our perception of it. And so we have to really make an effort to be consistent more than being like, like doing this thing where we start going hardcore and then we let it slow down. And then next year, the same thing happens again. We don't want to do that. And that's, that's really what Define My Day has done for me. It's to get me to be more consistent. It's natural to not be consistent. It's natural to cram right before a test. It's natural to, you know, work your butt off right before a deadline for a project. It's normal to clean up your house right before you have guests, right? It's just something in our physiology where we let things slide until there's a reason not to, some sort of external reason to pull our crap back together. So it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. It happens even with the highest functioning people in the world. What we need to do is try to minimize how often it happens or where it happens or its negative impact on us. So understanding that we're going to let things go and we're going to kind of like relax and then whatever. And then like right when you know, the, we start seeing that finish line or the deadline or whatever, or, you know, we know there's family coming over, and then we're going to go, holy crap. And then we're going to like really run hard to get things done. And then we're going to be really happy with the results, right? We're going to be happy with the end result. But, you know, we have to realize that we can't continue to do that or we're just really never going to make progress. So we have to be aware of the, the, the slow methodical steps that aren't quite so sexy, right? Like when you can see that, that the before and after, you know, especially like, you know, I mean, you see it with people losing weight all the time. There's before and after pics all over social media, right? Uh, but even like when you, when you go into a messy room and you clean it up and you look at it and you go, whoa, 
You know, you get that dopamine drip. You get that feeling of like accomplishment. But if you just maintained it to be clean every day and organized every day, maybe not to the like to the pristine condition that that end result we were just talking about got you, but maybe you just kept it normal for a while, right? It's not sexy. It's not sexy, but in the end, it's probably it probably requires much less work over time because it really takes five minutes to just straighten up a little bit. And the same thing can be hap- can be said in our life, right? Like you know the, the big weight loss, the, you know the twenty pound or fifty or hundred pound weight loss is like whoa. But what was the cost the entire time? The entire time we 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 got overweight, and the entire time you know that we may not have really enjoyed trying to lose it all again. There's a, there's a cost there. And uh, I, I, I want to minimize that cost you know, as much as possible. So the goal would be to, rather than have major swings in, in our weight and our health or our habits and you know how much we're working and spending time with family, like rather than damaging a relationship and repairing it, uh, gaining a lot of weight and then trying to lose a lot of it, um, you know, slacking on our work and then hurrying up and finishing projects, rather than that, back and forth bouncing back and forth we try to we try to mitigate the 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 swing and knowing there's still going to be a little bit of a swing there's always going to be fluctuations but try to minimize the the back and forth there and the end result over time is going to be better and your enjoyment going through it is going to be better because there's not that stress there's not the overwhelm there's not the anxiety there's not the feeling that like oh my gosh I have so much to do you know, so, uh, you know, as you go through this process, try to try to observe that feeling as you're going back and forth with this. Um, and, and and over time, you get more used to that, that sort of methodical approach rather than the hurry up, get it done and then slack off completely approach. Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of experience with that approach and that's why I'm talking about it. It's not healthy. And I still do it in some areas, right? Some areas that may be like not a real big priority, but I try to minimize the negative impact that that can have on me. It's, it's natural. Again, it's, it's completely natural, but some of us let it get too far. And I think it's, huh, maybe it's our cultural addiction to like success stories. And, you know, you see it in movies where you're like this tragic figure, you know, is just like they're miserable. Their life is ruined. And then they overcome this major thing. They, they rally all of their effort and all of their power to overcome this major adversity. And now everything's fixed and you know, it's sexy on the screen and it's amazing when you see it in people's lives, but in reality, it's probably not feasible. So we want to try to avoid that. So uh, that said, uh, you know, I, I think the, the main thing with, with all of this and what we have to keep in mind with the find my day is that there's really no magic pill, right? There's no, there's no like quick on and off switch. This is a process. And so we're going to go through some of the things that I've seen early on this year and some things I've seen in previous years with people struggling with Define My Day. But I think the main concept I want you to take from anything we talk about today is that you can do more in one year than you think. And you can do less in one day than you think. So don't overload your day. Take small steps forward. And realize that if you're consistent with it, you can accomplish much more in one year than you ever thought you could. And I, I relate this to my son. My son just started playing piano and he's teaching himself using a, a, an iPad app. You know, it's like 10 bucks a month or something to use this piano app. And so in three weeks, he's playing Jingle Bells. He's doing like all this stuff. And um, it's amazing. I mean, the progress he's making is amazing. But it's only because he sits there for 15 minutes, 15 minutes every day. That's all. He has it on his alarm. It goes off at 3.15 every day. He goes downstairs, plays 15 minutes of piano, and then he then he goes on with his day doing whatever else he has to do. And it's amazing. He can play piano better than me after – he's six years old, by the way. And he can do this just from playing for a couple of weeks. And it's not because he's a genius or naturally gifted or whatever. It's just because he has this little process he does every day and he's learning a little bit every day. And in this book, Outliers from Malcolm Gladwell, uh, he talks about, um, you know, the 10,000 hour rule where like somebody that is going to be good, the common thing that all these really great musicians have is that they've done 
10,000 hours of work, at least, if not more. But it's like 10,000 hours is that like benchmark, right? And so if you just imagine right now, say you say you want to play guitar, right? Say so you have this dream of, you know, just pulling out the guitar one day and, and playing a song and everybody going, whoa, that's amazing, right? You could start playing guitar right now, one hour per day. Just a little bit of practice, right? You don't have to go full on, do it for five hours a day. You play one hour per day. And in five years, imagine how good you would be. Like better than 99% of the world. And you could, at Christmas, be playing Christmas carols with the guitar. You could, you could start a you know, random little sing-along in your house. Or like, you know, do whatever, like whatever you dream of. And if you and eventually, if you're good enough, like just to be able to sit and relax and strum away at the guitar and maybe take your mind off of things. There's so many benefits to it. I mean, just to be able, the able, the ability to focus and the parts of your brain it develops. But beyond that, your enjoyment for it, one hour per day of just sitting down and practicing guitar. And in five years, you could be amazing. Now, imagine you started five years ago. Right? You're saying, well, oh, five years down the road, it's hard to look that far. Imagine if you started five years ago. Imagine if you just picked up five years ago the guitar and said, yeah, what if I do this? And just started doing it an hour per day. And I guarantee you can find an hour. Everybody says, I don't have enough time. I guarantee you can find an hour. You're watching TV. You're on your internet. You're, you're checking emails. You're on the phone. You can find an hour. I know you can. I could. I didn't think it could. Five years ago, I would have told you there's no way I don't have an hour in my day. I was making excuses and didn't realize it. I had a bad process, I had a bad mindset, and I was using my position in life, my current situation in life, I was excusing all of it because of, of time and hard work and whatever it was, and it was, I was completely wrong. Now, take that out to anything else. Say, say you know, right now you're unhappy with your overall health, right? You feel like you're overweight, you're out of shape, maybe you can't climb a flight of stairs, Maybe you just want to be able to live longer. Now, a lot of us have big dreams of ma losing major weight and being in a bathing suit or a bikini in, in June. What if we just took it a different way and said, what if I just ate healthier? What if I didn't really have a weight loss goal? What if I just ate healthier? What if I avoided snacks, like overdoing the snacks? What if I cut my portions down a little bit? What if I focused on eating more vegetables and fruits? What if I focused on eating less processed foods, cut out soft drinks, stuff like that, right? No weight goal, but we just changed our lifestyle a little bit. Do you think in five years you'd wake up and go, I feel pretty good? Same thing happens with everything else, how you approach work. You know, yeah, we have big goals, but usually it's the day-to-day -day activities that stop us and slow us down. It's the day-to-day -day activities where we you know, hamstring ourselves, where we knock our feet out from beneath us because we're, we're not following just basic good practices. We're looking far down the road at things we want, but not actually doing the things to get us there. You know, we need to focus more on what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis to develop a routine and not engaging in things that hurt us. And I'll give you an example in my life right now with the Steelers. They lost their playoff game last night. They look pitiful. They were down 28 points in the first quarter. You have to try real hard to be that bad. And it all started happening. They were 11-0 at one point this season. It all started happening when the Ravens got COVID and they delayed the Steeler game and all the, the wheels fell off after that because the Steelers started talking about Oh, they're against us. Oh, they're screwing with our schedule. Oh, this. They started looking at everybody else to blame rather than focusing on what they were doing for themselves and the, the practice that they needed. They made all these excuses about why they could fail, how they could fail, the reason they were failing. You know, all the things going on, they're looking at everybody else and it just, the wheels fell off. The whole thing blew up. And I can go to one person, you know, our, our wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster, right? This guy, he's got like 3 million followers on TikTok right now. He's a, he's a big TikTok guy. And it was cute for a while. I saw some of his TikToks at the beginning of the season. But he started doing this thing where he was dancing on the opponent's logo. 
and it was causing controversy. That's a distraction. He got a lot of fun out of it, right? He had a good time. He got a lot of followers on TikTok, people commenting, people liking. Turned him into like a little minor celebrity on TikTok about this. But did it take him where he wanted to go? If, he, if his ultimate goal was to win a Super Bowl, did it get him there? No. Did it damage his potential to get, a, get to a Super Bowl otherwise? Yeah, a little bit. Maybe it wasn't the sole reason, but it was a little bit. And you add up a bunch of those little bits, and it becomes a distraction that completely knocks you off your path. So if you look at you know the organization as a whole and bring it to you, how many little things are you doing that are in opposition to where you want to go? You know, if your goal is to be healthier, mind, body, soul, to be better at work, to have a better relationship with people around you, anybody, what are you doing that's in direct opposition to that, sometimes on a daily basis? And you might not even see it. Sometimes somebody else has to tell you. And you just have to say, well, okay, wait a minute, maybe they got a point here. But it's always observing what you're doing and if it's taking you down the path that you want to go. That's why we review every day. That's why we write down our goals, write down our priorities, and then review them at the end of every day. The purpose of that is to gain awareness. The purpose is not to get it right. The purpose is not to score high on our, like, checking everything off. Woohoo, I scored. Like, where are we keeping score there? Score doesn't matter. You could be, you know, comparing your stuff to everybody else doing Define My Day and be the number one person. But if it's not taking you where you want to go, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So the whole process is to learn to grow. So you can write down your priorities and do them all. But if at the end of the day, you're reviewing that and going, wow, I, you know, I don't feel good about it. And this is why. Or, you know, my goal is to be a, you know, a, a better, I don't know, let's say the postal guys outside right now. I want to be a, a, a more efficient postal worker. I want to get promoted. I don't want to be driving this truck. I want to get promoted. How would I get promoted? If you're not doing the things that require that promotion, or that promotion requires, you're not going to get it. And if you get it, you're going to luck into it. And you still kind of didn't like, you know, you probably could have done it faster. You might not be experienced enough or have the tools to get the job or be in the job once you get there. So are you doing the things daily that get you that promotion? You know, are you the relationship? Are you doing the things daily in the relationship to have a good relationship? Are you doing the things daily to be healthy overall? Or are you just hoping to be healthy? Like that's on a whole different path. You're hoping to get there, but you're walking, you're walking the wrong way. And we, we have to stop that. I'm going to go into the comments. I've been talking for 18 minutes and haven't gone into the comments yet. Now, for everybody watching, if you missed it, today we're giving away a Do One Thing That Inspires You book, a mindfulness journal. Oh, it's actually a creativity journal. Uh, to the person that types in the comments uh, one of their wins, and I'll pick out randomly somebody that gives me one of the wins they've had using Define My Day in 2021. So before I get into the comments, I'm going to write, or I'm going to read one thing out of this journal. And this one is uh, from George Santanyaya, Yana, Santanyana, never heard of him. Sorry if anybody else has. Uh, to turn events into ideas is the function of literature. So his quote is, to turn events into ideas is the function of literature. And so the prompt for today is to choose a current event, turn it into a poem, story, or artwork. So there you go. So take a current event and turn it into artwork. There's your inspire, inspiration for the day. So uh, if uh, by the end of this uh, session, I'm going to give away one of these books to a person that types in the comments one of their wins for 2021 so far. All right, let's get into the comments. Let's go. And uh, so I forgot about this. I don't know what made me think about it, but I have the sound effects in uh, this this app that I use for uh, for this this video here. And so, you know, you can do, you can do applause for people. There's a bicycle horn, like all this stuff, right? And there is this one. You guys ever heard that before? So my boys will walk around the house once in a while if they hear it in a video and they'll walk around the house going, bah, 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 right? Just, they, it's just one of the random things they do. 
So I was playing with this before we started the video and my son heard it down the hall. So now he's like, dad, what's that? And he's, oh my gosh. So he, he has been walking around the house now going burr, 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 like just, he, he's, he's funny. Oh my goodness. Okay. Brenda, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, uh, I see 2020, uh, happy new year. Oh, I see it. 2021. Uh, Sherry, good morning, Jean. It's cold and snowing, no sun in Rochester. Sorry to hear that. You know what? I, you know, I, I don't mind snowy. I just don't like gray. Like Pittsburgh is one of the cloudiest cities in the world. I don't like gray. I don't like damp. But snow is great. Sun is great, right? I don't even mind temperatures so much. But um, I don't like gray. And uh, one of the things, and it's fun, like this, it's funny how fast this year has gone. We moved into this house. One of the scenes that I saw out the window through my mind's eye was like a snow covered street and snow covered sidewalks and yard and just the way the lights would reflect on it, the warm white lights in the evening. And I actually got that photo and I'm very happy. Like it was just, it was exactly how I imagined it, which was great. Um, but I, you know, it also made me think of how fast these holidays have gone by. And it's gone by for a couple of reasons. It's gone by really fast because, you know, uh, of, of the work, like our naturally we get busier this time of year. So we've been prepping for work and, and doing the work, but also like all the distraction, like the political distraction, the economic distraction, the, all the things, COVID distractions around the world. And this, these, this season has flown by. Um, now here we are in January and there's like really like nothing for a couple of months, which I'm sort of looking forward to in a way, uh, but also really looking to spring. And I know Luann has been counting down the days for the first day of spring. So, um, we're all looking forward to it. Um, but it's crazy. It's crazy. It's also crazy. I was just walking around the house this morning. We started taking down Christmas decorations and, uh, how uncluttered the house looks right now. It was jammed with Christmas decorations, just jammed. And it looked great. And it was great when we first did it. But then after a while, like, you just kind of want, like, normal again. And now the house looks so clean. It's almost like when we first moved in. It's really nice. Um, good morning, Jean. I got two Jeans. Spelled the same way. Uh, my will is... My will. My, your win. I want to say your win. <laughs> Jean, your win is I did clean my stockpile and basement. Good. Very cool. Uh, Debbie says, morning all, marvelous Monday. My win so far in 2021 was to clean out my clothing for donation. Very cool. Nine bags of clothing. Holy. Uh, shoes, purses, and coats all donated to a local weave center. Good for you. Good for you, Debbie. Uh, Patricia says, I'm struggling to start using. I did last Monday. By last Tuesday, I blew it. <laughs> Gonna try to watch some of your videos today. Patricia, you are, uh exactly the type of person that I want to speak to today because this is hard, right? Especially if you, if, if you're this person, like, so again, we, I talked about it the other week. There are, there are two types of people here. There are the people that are overdoing it and doing too much and, um, uh, just, just overwhelmed and they can't find a spare minute. And then there are other types of people that are just stuck. Right. And you just just trying to you're just trying to get moving. And sometimes there's, those people can be blended and sort of in the same thing. Like you're trying to move in a different direction. but You're stuck in your processes. So let's talk about that. If you are a person overdoing it and you just can't find a minute in your day, I think it's very important to start watching where you spend your time. You have to pay attention to where you're investing your time so you can find where you're investing it in low value areas. Your time is the most important resource you have. It's, it's your most valuable resource in your life. We all have no idea how much time we have left for the most part. We have no idea how much time we have left. And I compare it to going to the ATM and every day taking out a certain amount of money, not know, ever knowing what the balance is. And then one day you would drive up to the ATM and you're punching the numbers and you get that that message on the screen, uh, not the insufficient funds, which is at that point, the end, right? And so we're all going to come to that point where we're going to have insufficient funds. We're going to have insufficient time, nothing left. 
And so where are we spending our time every day? We have to be aware of that. You know, a lot of people don't like looking forward to their death, right? They don't like thinking about the end of their life. But you have to. You have to be aware of it, that it is coming. And where you spend time right now matters. I don't want you, like we talked earlier here, you know, we, we try to hustle at the end. You know, at the end of our lives, we're generally tired and, and sort of broken down. We can't hustle anymore. We get all the energy when we're young. And so if you have any ability right now to do the things that are important to you, take the time to do them. And that might mean not doing things you're used to doing that you shouldn't be doing. Whether it's things for other people, things around the house, things for your job. Like at some point you have to look at your, your activities in a day and say, does this even matter? Will the world change if I don't do this? Sometimes the answer is it might change for the better if I don't do this. Where am I wasting my valuable time? You know, and, and, and sometimes the answer is easy. Sometimes you can say, well, I'm watching three hours of TV today. I need to stop that. Maybe it's more. Maybe you're watching eight hours of TV a, a day. Right now during a pandemic, maybe you're watching eight hours of TV. Maybe you're watching 12. You know, imagine going back to the piano example. You cut your TV time down to 11 hours, take, spend an hour on the piano or an hour on the guitar. In five years, you're, a, you're an expert at piano. What are you an expert of if you're watching three hours of TV a day? You're an expert TV watcher. Man, where's the value in that? And again, there's people out there going, what well, helps me relax? Is it? Is it? If the overall impact on your life is that you're not getting things done, it's not helping. It's not helping. I feel like this is real talk with Nick right now. Seriously. If it's not helping, it's not helping. If it's distracting you from doing the things that actually change your life, it's not helping. It's an excuse. So you got to stop. Or change it. The way I changed it was to start watching TV while I was doing the dishes or doing other kinds of chores. So it didn't get my full attention. But at the same time, it was sort of entertaining me while I was doing these menial tasks. I even like now I'll put something on my phone and I'll listen to it while I'm mowing the lawn. And then I started gradually adding in like educational podcasts and audiobooks and things like that. But it's very seldom. Like I'll sit down now to watch movies with my kids because it's sort of a together thing that I'd like to do. I'll watch football with my kids. But I had stopped watching football and hockey for a while. I don't watch a single sitcom. Occasionally I get into a Netflix series or whatever, but a lot of times I'm doing that while I'm watching or while I'm washing the dishes. So I've changed it. So that it's not so much of a time suck. It's more of a distraction while I'm doing something I don't enjoy doing. That I know needs to be done anyway. Cleaning out the garage. I'll put something on my phone and listen to a TV show while I'm cleaning the garage. Three hours later, my garage is clean and I sort of watched a TV show. But, so, the other part of this is the people that just can't like bring themselves to get moving with to find my day. And there's a couple things here. One, you might be overdoing it. There's a significant chance, especially if you have not spent a whole lot of time focusing on what's really important to you, you might not be in the practice of doing it. And I, I, I you know, talk about, you know, getting off the couch and running a marathon. It generally just doesn't happen. If you spent the past five years on the couch, you're not going to go out and run a marathon. You're going to break yourself. And the same thing is going on with mental things like, you know, focusing on important issues for yourself, important, important priorities. So you have to gradually go there. So what I would recommend for somebody that's having a real hard time, if you're saying, I, I tried Monday, Monday worked out, but Tuesday, I couldn't even do it. Number one, if, if you're just not in the habit of, of getting into it, I would say make that your priority. Just follow the process. Make the one agreement with yourself is that you are just going to work the process. No excuses. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to spend five minutes every day doing this. It might be messy. It might be ugly. It doesn't matter. Just get into the process. Schedule it and do it. 
uphold your own agreements to yourself. Because if you can't uphold your own agreements to yourself, you're not going to be able to uphold your agreements to everybody else. And that leads to crappy relationships. Don't have a crappy relationship with yourself. Do the things you promise yourself. That's really important. Sorry, somebody's calling me. Um, do the things that are really important for yourself. Uphold your own agreements. You have to do it with yourself first before you can do it with anybody else. Now, a lot of people get overwhelmed with it. A lot of people, you know, they do go in there every day and they do start working, but then at the end of the day, didn't do all of the things they wrote down and that's frustrating. It's overwhelming. They don't feel like they're making progress. And what I say there is, were those things truly important? Were they really priorities? And number two, did you put too much on your plate? Again, you can do more in a year than you think. You can probably do less in a day than you think. So if you're working your butt off and you are just going, 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 we need to reassess how much you're putting on your plate. You need to gain a better view of the value of everything you're putting on your plate. And you're, you need to figure out how much time each thing takes. A good strategy to figure this out is to time block your day. So everything you write down on your define my day, you know, take your ideal day and put it into your schedule. So you have what time you want to wake up, what time you want to go to sleep. You have when you're going to eat your meals, you have any other obligations, appointments, whatever, you know, meetings, things that happen regularly in your day. So you have all that in there. This works really well if you have Outlook or a calendar on your phone, which we all do. Because you can move things around easily without erasing. And so then, like once you have all your obligations on your page within the time you're going to be awake, you start putting in the things you have committed to on your Define My Day. So, you know, hopefully your priorities you can put in the morning and you block off how long you think it's going to take you to do priority one, priority two, priority three. And any other to-do listy items you have in there. And what most people find when they do that is that they don't have enough time in their day to get it done. And so then what happens? We get in the habit of not completing things. We get in the habit of procrastinating until tomorrow. And But the problem is tomorrow has its own things that need to be done. So then we're bouncing things from today to tomorrow and they either keep getting kicked down the road or they push things from tomorrow off until the next day. So if you time block your day with realistic times, and, and again, you might not keep it within the boundaries that you set. That's an awareness thing. So if priority number one, you scheduled one hour today and it took three hours well, now you have a greater awareness of how long this task takes. And you learn from that and you can grow that awareness and use it for the next time you try to schedule this. If you finish all of your stuff in a fraction of the time you scheduled, well, now you know you're, you're overestimating the time it takes and you can do more. Generally, that's not the case with people I talk to. Generally, they're saying, well, I can get this done in an hour. And the next thing you know, you know, it's three hours later, they're exhausted. And they still, now they're behind by two hours and all the other stuff is just getting beat down the list. Again, it's okay. We want to grow our awareness of, of how long things are going to take. And then, you know, when you see all of that, you can start making more educated decisions about whether I need to continue doing some things. You're going to see like, this is one important thing that I said is really important to me is going to move my life forward that all these other things are getting in the way of it, well, then we just need to stop doing all these other things, right? Because this is the one really important thing we need to do and all this other stuff is getting in the way. Stop letting it get in the way. Ask somebody else to help. Resign yourself to the fact that some of these things just aren't going to get done. You know, I, I, I talk about like doing chores around the house. If you spend your entire day doing chores around the house, but you're unhappy with your life, because of, you know, whatever one thing. Stop doing all the chores around the house, right? Like you're taking pride in the wrong thing. You're taking pride in keeping a clean house, but 
there's this one really th big thing that can change your life. And if you don't do that, you're going to regret it. But keeping a clean house, who cares? Like, I, I mean, I, I, I care, right? I like my house to be orderly. But at the same time, if I have other things that are going to, you know, improve my financial situation, if I can spend time with my kids outside and build that relationship, if I can help other people, that's more important than my house being 100% totally clean. And then, you know, if I'm focusing on this thing, you know, when I have some off time on the weekend and I want to spend time, order, you know, put my house in order, then I do that. That's what I did yesterday. I was half watching football, half cleaning up the house. But we have to have awareness of this priority order in what we're doing. And you have to uphold your commitments. If you say, I'm going to do this, starting with your priorities, right? Starting with like the things that are really important to you. If you say it's important to you, show yourself it's important to you. Because if you just blow it off, then you're telling yourself, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. And it's either doesn't really matter or it does matter and you're choosing to ignore it, which is probably worse. Because if it really doesn't matter, truly doesn't matter, gaining the awareness of that is, is good. But if it's really important to you and you're not upholding your obligation to yourself and you're getting in the habit of avoiding what's important to you, that's a problem. That's a big problem. That's training yourself to not do the things that are important to you and basically leave your life in this stagnant place where we just, you know, it, it, that's when people start when you hear like victim, you know, like when you're, when you're, when people have this victim mentality, when they start blaming other people for things, when they start getting really unhappy and grumpy with their life and they, they look at, they blame everybody else. That's the, that's the, that's where it starts. Like when you don't take ownership of what's going on in your own life and you're just waiting for somebody else to do it for you, that's, 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 that's just damaging in here. So we, we can't, we can't allow that to happen. So I would say if you can't keep up with the process, big tangent there, if we can't keep up with the process, uphold the agreement, make that your priority. I will do this every day. Get in the habit, develop that routine, develop the rhythm. That's the purpose of the ideal day is to develop rhythm, to do the same things during the same periods of time every day to develop a rhythm, develop a schedule. It works. And then in the times when we have free time, we can enjoy that better. Uh, Brenda's win. Week two of having a meal plan done by Sunday night. Yes. Uh, each day's ingredients are binned and ready to go. I actually failed here, Brenda. Uh, I did not prepare today's dinner yesterday. Uh, I made a salad, so we're good for a salad for the week. But I didn't thaw anything out for today. So we just had to have that discussion. Like, what's something quick we can make for tonight that's not unhealthy? Uh, and then we're going to try to plan for tomorrow. But it's so much easier. Like, it's that trap you fall into when you're not prepared when you grab garbage. You know, we could easily throw a pizza in the oven. It'll be done in 15 minutes tonight. But, you know... If we want the end result, we have to do a little bit of planning to make sure that, you know, we have the things ready to go to eat healthy. A new week, a better one, I hope, says Sandy. I hope so, too. Uh, you know, the, last week uh, we saw somebody else we know die from COVID. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this, like, that's a stressor for a lot of people. And it's kind of, you know, having all these things swirling around us is, uh, is a problem. You know, people are dealing with some stuff that we're not used to dealing with. Uh, but I think that makes it more important for us to be healthy so that we can focus on what's really important to us and do the things that are important. Uh, but, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we have to be aware that there's there's some real negative stuff going on. And coping with that uh, is new for us. So, uh, you know, Sandy, I would say, you know, a new week, a better one, I hope too. Um and I think we have that responsibility to try to make it a better one for ourselves, too. So keep it up. I think, you know, again, small steps every day, right? Kim, my win is listening to you. Mondays are rough. Hey, Kim, thank you. Thank you. Um, keep it up. 
you know, keep doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. I don't know what your specific situation is. Uh, Mondays are a little bit hectic here too, especially for me last night going to bed late. Today was a rough day. Uh, and, um, you know, we're, we're a little short staffed today too. So it's going to be a little hectic. Lynn's still trying to keep up with, uh, with her work in the shipping department since like we're, we're all COVID lockdown. So everything's happening out of our house. And so, uh, Lynn's been shipping everything out of our basement and, uh, it's, it's, it's not easy, but, uh, we have a division of labor right now where I'm doing all the cooking and taking care of the boys and their homework and stuff. And, um, uh, you know, we're, we're making do, but yeah, today, today is a little rough. Now, Sherry says my win, oh, come on, what's going on? My win is continuing to make eating and sleeping a priority while focusing on my daughter's health issue. Before DMD, I would really have trouble focusing on self during a crisis. That's good. Uh, and you bring up, Sherry, you bring up a good point that I sort of touched on uh, in a previous answer here, is that making eating and sleeping a priority can be dynamically helpful in everything we're doing. A lot of times, we can't do the things that we know we need to do for ourselves because we're not taking care of that foundation. It's why we have the daily disciplines. And I think that for a lot of people, just sleep is something that we're hurting ourselves. I know for myself last night, I went to bed at 1130 last night because I stayed up to watch the game and I still woke up at six o'clock and I was dragging my butt through the morning. Uh, in fact, my son and I, after breakfast, like sat on the couch for 20 minutes and just sat there, which is not normal, but we were both so tired. Uh, and it's, I can't imagine going through that every day. It's just, I wouldn't be able to function. Like right now I'm rallying with a, with a good cup of coffee, but it's very important to get sleep and like eight hours of sleep, like quality sleep. And there are very good books out there about how to get quality sleep. And if you're not getting good sleep, I would read one of these books to find out how I can get better sleep. And if you're purposefully hurting your own sleep because you're staying up late watching TV, reading the internet, watching TikTok, I'm referencing things that I've done myself. Um, if you're doing that, then you have to be aware that, that doing that in that moment is hurting you for tomorrow. It's hurting your focus. It's hurting your energy, your ability to do deep work. You, you don't want to hurt yourself. When I talk about doing, engaging in things that are really hurting us, that's a big one. Make sure you're getting good sleep. If you can start there, everything else becomes easier. So I love that you're making eating and sleeping a priority. Hopefully that becomes a discipline and you don't have to write it down on your priority every day. I do sometimes right now myself. If I feel myself like I might be tempted to eat unhealthy, I put there as a priority, eat healthy today. It happens, but hopefully it becomes part of me. It's part of who I am. And then I can move on to bigger and better things, right? Betty says, I just need to eat a salad today. I buy the food and then it goes bad before I eat it. Hey, we've done that too. We just had uh, Brussels sprouts. I think the expiration date was like the best buy date was like November and they looked good. And then we pulled them out of the fridge last week and cut them open. And they were like all rotten on the inside. And I'm, you know, every time that happens, I think to myself, why? It's not like we didn't eat anything. It's just we chose not to eat the thing we knew we wanted to eat. We, we chose not to uphold our plan. And again, that's something that we don't want to do. Like we, number one, we spent the money, hate to waste it. Number two, we spent the money on something healthy for ourselves and chose not to follow through with that. That's not okay. Hey, Luann, good to see ya. Uh, Luann's big goal this year is to finally learn how to use this phone. I really need it. 10 years old, 10 year old secretary. Uh, Jean says, sorry about your Steelers, but my Buffalo is doing very well. Buffalo is doing well. Uh, and my husband's Tampa Bay are doing well. Yeah, good for you guys. Yeah, I don't know who I'm going to root for now. I think maybe Kansas City, sorry. But Kansas City and uh, I don't know about on the other side. I'm not definitely not going to be as engaged, which will probably save me some sleep and some extra calories if I don't really pay much attention. D, my win is to donate items I don't need and use. Good for you. Yeah, decluttering is a big one. Getting back on track, back on track, eating healthy. Awesome. 
Uh, Sandy, one of my wins is to remind myself daily I can do hard things. It moves me forward. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that would be a great theme. Today's theme at the bottom of the page, I can do hard things. It's also a great affirmation. For anybody looking for an affirmation or a theme for the end of your day, or for the bottom of your page there on your Define My Day, I can do hard things. It's it's simple. It's a simple thing, but like when when you're getting to that point where something just looks difficult, a lot of times it's really not difficult. It's just that we don't want to put the energy into it for whatever reason. But we need to. On the other side of doing that hard thing is a really good result. And we have to understand that there's value there. And so you just say to yourself, I can do this. Uh, Gene says, you've never experienced rock. Uh, what's rock? Is that Rochester? Uh, New York, gray days. It's been since. It's been days since we've seen the sun. Yeah, it's been days here too. Although we have a couple of days now that we're going to see the sun. Um like you, I run to the window. I see it when it comes out. That's awesome. Um, lentil soup and salad tonight. I haven't had a good lentil soup in a long time. That sounds really good. Angel. I knew we were missing somebody. Late logging in, but I wanted to say good morning. I have a lot of family members with COVID and have been dropping things off on doorsteps in a different state. It's been a rough week. Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. We, we've had, COVID has touched us Um a lot more in recent weeks. Um, you know, like I said, our, our neighbor's mom died last month. Uh, we had a, a, a family member of a family member pass away last week. In fact, they canceled Christmas, but still ended up getting it. And, and she passed away within a week of, of getting it. We have friends right now that have it. A younger couple, um, and they seem to be going okay, lost their sense of taste and smell, had a cold for a couple of days, but for the most part, seemed to be going through it okay. So all different ends of the spectrum. It's it's crazy, crazy. It's an, it's it's just it's an amazing illness that how it impacts different people. I've never seen anything like this, and I, I think a lot of people haven't. I guess it's just it's so weird. Um, Debbie says, Angel Thomas, bless you for blessing their support system or for being their support system. Please take care and get the rest you need. I yeah, I think I kind of lost that there. Um, the fact that. You're going out of your way to do that is amazing. Um, I think that's, you know, that's the opportunity here to be, you know, like to really put our uh, money where our mouth is, I guess, if you want to say. Like a lot of people talk a good game, but when it comes down to like helping others out, um, sometimes it's, you know, it, it's it's a little more work. But the fact that you do it is amazing. And uh I can appreciate that, so thank you. Uh, Kirsten says, I really like the idea of not letting your TV suck your time, only TV during other activities, no more wasting time. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to game yourself. You know, I, I feel like that was kind of a game that I made, my, like it was kind of a, a hack for myself so that I could still get what I wanted while doing things that I needed to do. Um, you know, but that also the, the I get to enjoy component of the Define My Day uh, was a big part of that. Like, I'd have to make, like, I'd have to negotiate with myself to get things done. Like, I get to enjoy watching a TV show tonight if I do this. So if I complete all three priorities, I'll reward myself by watching TV. Um, if I do all my priorities, then I can have a beer with my friends later tonight. Like, it's like, it was like literally... Like, like I would punish myself if I didn't do my things. And what ended up happening was that if I, you know, like towards the end of the day, if I didn't have one of those things done and I really wanted to do this thing, then I would do that. And I would even stay at work a little bit later to do it. Or I would like tell everybody, leave me alone. I got to finish this. Because if not, then I wasn't allowing myself to watch TV. I wasn't allowing myself to go out, whatever it was. It was like a, it was like a parent, adult, uh, child thing happening in my head. Um, for myself, which I think some of us need sometimes. Uh, Jean says, uh, my Aunt Sally passed this week. Uh, we are heartbroken. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah. You know, I think we're going to see more and more of these stories and, uh, you know, in the way in which they're going lonely, um, alone, uh, and, and you can't have the proper kind of service for them. Um, it's painful. It's, it's real painful. Um, so, Gene, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. 
Kirsten, totally me, making deals with myself. It totally works for me too. Yeah, I, I, it's just, you know, I if 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 uh, if I do this, I can get this. Yeah, you have to make sure the deals aren't damaging. You know, like it's you see that with people that are on like a weight loss plan, like they they eat very healthy for six days and then blow it up on Sunday uh, because they allow themselves that treat, but the treat ends up you know outweighing. Like if you save yourself. Say you save yourself 200 calories a day, you know, for a thousand calorie deficit at the end of the week, but then you blow it up and have 5,000 calories on a Saturday. Well, you're still over the weekly, right? So you have to kind of make sure your reward isn't hurting you. And so for me, you know, my awareness of, of, you know, I want to watch TV, like I want to watch that TV show at the end of the night. Well, if the TV show is on from 10 to 11, then I'm not getting to bed on time. I'm going to wake up tired and it's actually damaging tomorrow. So I would have to somehow fix that. Like I might have to DVR it and watch it at a reasonable time the next day. So make sure it's just not like, you know, for me, like going out and having a beer can't turn into partying until two in the morning, you know, so it's, it can't be damaging. So the awareness of that is important. Uh, Debbie says, uh, I enjoy hand embroidery, but em, embroidery. Oh my God, I can't say it right now. Uh, embroidery. Woo! Uh, but put it off because I didn't have time to do it, but realized I was watching TV each evening. So now I work on my embroidery as I watch uh, and uh, thoroughly enjoy doing both activities. And so, Debbie, I, I think the, your point right there is, is huge. You know, like, so, especially the I don't have time for it part. <laughs> Because so many people say, I don't have time for, you know, exercising, uh, taking a walk, reading, doing the define my day process, which literally takes 10 minutes a day. Like, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I guarantee if I followed somebody around that said that, if I followed them around every day, I could find 10 minutes in their day. In fact, I could probably find hours in their day. That they're spending on things that are just not important or they're just leaking time everywhere. And I can't, and this is one of the points that I haven't brought up yet that I wanted to. It's very important to sometimes just sit and think whether you're meditating, which I think is incredibly important, or you're just sitting around and just sort of reassessing where you're going to spend the rest of your time for the day. It's really important to just slow down and stop and gain some awareness of, as to where we are right now. Because a lot of us get caught up in this riptide where we're just like going from the moment we wake up until we go to sleep and we have no idea where our time went. And I'll tell you, a lot of time goes here. A lot of time goes here. We're just on our phones, like every spare minute. And my kids are, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of in that, right? Where I have to tell them, look, not every spare minute needs to be spent on your iPad, on your PlayStation and whatever. So we've We've built in parts of their day where they can't do that stuff and they have to find something. They have to be creative and they have to find something to do. And a lot of times they have discussions with us or they'll find something kind of interesting around the house or they'll read, educate themselves. And if they, so if they stop getting in the habit of distracting themselves and focusing, that wires the brain to focus more. But if you keep distracting yourselves and letting time just go everywhere, you're wiring your brain to be distracted and to want more distraction. And we have to avoid that as much as possible. All right, let me see uh, if I got anything else on here. No, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. We hit everything. So I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get to who wins the... Do one thing every day that inspires you. Uh, this goes to the person that wrote down a win, and I'm going to try to randomly land my mouse on somebody, so uh, no scientific method to picking somebody right now. If you win, please email help at definemyday.com because a lot of times, if you're not a customer, I don't have you, and, it's, and, and sometimes I can't find somebody's contact information in our software. So uh, please, if you win, let me know so I can contact you. All right, I am randomly finding somebody here. I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. And uh, let's see, where'd we land? 
Brenda. Brenda. Um, so Brenda Kirk and you, week two of having a meal plan done by Sunday night, each day's ingredients are binned and ready to go. And I, I really love that one, so I'm glad you won this. Uh, please email us at help at definemyday.com with your information where you want to send. Just write that you had won um, per Nick, getting the uh, do one thing every day that inspires you and your address, and we can send that out to you. So congratulations. Very cool. Uh, I like that one. So that was, that was a really good one. I, 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 I'm glad you won that. Um, hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, everybody, listen, have a great week. Uh, please keep pressing forward. Keep moving forward. Remember, we can do hard things. Uh, define your day to define your life. Keep taking those small step forward. Uh, you can listen to this on any podcast platform starting tomorrow. You can check, catch the replay on YouTube. If you missed any of the things over uh, for the past couple of months, um, you know, walking through the process, please check that out on YouTube too. All right, everybody, take care.